Hey there, Commanders. Today, we will be covering a ship build to go along with my recent overview of Thargoid War logistical missions. If you will recall, during that video I discussed a few of the different threats and constraints that these logistical missions introduce. This build will be focused on overcoming them with the least amount of engineering required. So, we will be sacrificing some aspects of performance in order to reduce the amount of grind required to build it. Since passenger evacuation missions are a top performer in terms of reward per mission accepted, this build will specialize in it, and largely ignore all other mission offerings. Since we want to maximize the number of available ports that can receive us, this build will also utilize the medium landing pad. This is because there are a lot of systems under threat by Thargoids that do not have the infrastructure to support large pad ships. The Python is one of the best multi-role ships available for medium-sized landing pads. Both versatile and adaptable, nobody should be surprised to see this vessel darting about between outposts and settlements. Python has not seen much use in AX combat, largely due to its relative lack of maneuverability compared to the crate. However, its massive cargo hold and mid-tier jump range offer it some distinct advantages for logistical work that the crate does not have, though it too can be adapted for logistics if needed. This python is set up for hot evacuation missions, meaning that it can be used to serve as stations under attack by Thargoids. As a result, we are planning on receiving incoming fire and want to give our ship the best chance for survival. In support of that objective, this build is fitted with military-grade composites, offering a total of 910 absolute integrity. Lightweight alloy is possible here, but with increased risk of death in the event you get swarmed by scouts or Thargons. Engineering on this component is optional for this build, since we aren't planning on extended combat. We want enough hull integrity to readily absorb shield breaching damage from scouts and interceptors while maneuvering around stations and in transit through the system. Heavy duty engineering can increase survivability at the cost of jump range, while lightweight engineering will increase jump range at the cost of survivability. Since the difference between a stock lightweight alloy hull and military-grade composites is only two light years of jump range, the impact is not too bad considering the higher durability. For a power plant, I've opted for the 7A reactor without any engineering. It is possible to go as small as a size 5A reactor, though this will require the Grade 5 overcharged blueprint. Jump range increase for this swap is noticeable, though it reduces your ability to effectively scoop fuel from stars during travel, due to the extra reactor heat. The 7A reactor leaves the door open for more diverse modification at the commander's discretion, but it can be undersized to your heart's content, assuming you know what to do. The 6A thrusters will need at least grade 3 dirty drive tuning with drag drive experimental effect. The faster the better, so shoot for grade 5 if available for even better chances of escape. This is an essential upgrade, and should be acquired early in the build. Anything less than grade 3 runs the risk of being overtaken by interceptors during a hyperdiction. Since the Python can accept a size 5 frameshift drive, the Tech Broker 5A drive is best. This unique item is available at all human tech brokers, requiring a list of materials to be exchanged for a single drive module. This list of materials is a sizable grind by itself, but achievable in a few days. This item is the most difficult thing to acquire on this build, but can be substituted by a 5A long-range engineered frameshift drive with the Mass Manager experimental effect. This will reduce jump range and fuel economy, but can shave some time off the build process if you are in a hurry. Since this ship is not intended for offensive combat operations, a 4D life support is leveraged to save power and weight for a slight increase in jump capability. No engineering is required here, though the lightweight blueprint can be used to shave off a fraction of a light year of jump range, if desired. To save time and engineering materials, the power distributor is size 7A. 
This does not quite give us optimal boost power, but it's close enough to be effective in escaping Thargoids when combined with engineered thrusters. With grade 5 engine-focused engineering and the cluster capacitor experimental effect, it is possible to go as small as a 2A distributor, though this would be something for a dedicated min-maxer and is not necessary for adequate performance. Sensors are size 6D. No engineering is applied here, though if desired, lightweight engineering is best for this application. The 5C fuel tank is left as stock. The shield generator is a mission-critical component and should be set up for maximum absolute strength. For this task, the 6A standard or prismatic shield generator is best. Engineer this shield with the reinforced grade 5 blueprint and use the high capacity experimental effect. Be aware that the prismatic shield will draw more power and likely require a larger reactor if you have been undersizing. Avoid biweave shields for this application, as they are easier to breach and may lack the endurance needed to withstand attack during docking procedures. The remaining size 6, 5, and 3 optional internals will be economy class passenger cabins. This will maximize our carrying capacity, since refugees don't require anything better. The size 4 optional internal compartment can be fitted with an additional economy cabin, or a fuel scoop, depending on your route. Shorter runs won't need the scoop at all, allowing for an additional 8 passengers of capacity, but longer routes might, depending on your FSD, require a fuel scoop. It's better to equip the 4A fuel scoop for this slot, or at least have it stored nearby, in the event it is needed. For convenience and consistency, the size 2 optional internal slot is fitted with a supercruise assist unit. This can help with crash drops, and generally makes longer grinds less demanding on your attention. This can be swapped out for a cargo rack or additional passenger cabin, though this does not net you much in the way of total capacity, and in this commander's opinion, is worth the sacrifice for a more enjoyable flight. The size 1 optional internal is fitted with an advanced docking computer to help facilitate consistent performance when docking or undocking. While it is faster to dock manually, long grinds can make this process repetitive and annoying, so it's here to help keep things flowing smoothly. Like the Super Cruise Assist unit, it can be swapped out for a tiny bit more cargo or passenger capacity. No hard points are installed on this build but the Python is flexible enough to support them at the cost of jump range. The ship would need a full-sized power plant and capacitor to give the weapons enough grunt to do anything meaningful. Since the ship is fast enough to escape most engagements, there is no specific need for weapons. The utility mounts are all fitted with a size 0A shield booster. This build does not call for any engineering, since these boosters will make us strong enough to withstand incoming fire at stations or during interceptor escapes. Should you want to engineer them anyway, I recommend the heavy-duty blueprint with supercapacitor experimental effects. Do remember to keep an eye on your power constraints, as some builds may not have enough power headroom to do this. A single shield booster can be swapped out for a heatsink to assist in stealthy approaches, and to aid in hiding from interceptors that may be in the area. This does reduce overall durability in exchange for stealth, though in my testing I did not find a need for it in typical encounters. Just get in, dock, load, and get out. Interceptors prioritize active hostile ships around stations, and this ship is fast enough to outrun an interceptor hyperdiction without needing a heatsink. As outfitted, this ship will cost about 210 million credits to build, slightly less if you have the Shinrata permit, more so if you are willing to outfit in a Lee on Rui system. Despite only having three engineered modules, this build is reliant on dirty drive tuning, so it is recommended for players who have Farseer, and Li Chun unlocked with the credits to spare. It's possible to adapt any existing Python to this task by swapping in the optionals as listed above, though your performance may vary based on how the rest of the ship is fitted. Power priorities in this build are set as follows, with the frameshift drive and prismatic shields receiving the highest precedence. 
These priorities should only become an issue if your shields drop, a condition that should be avoided if at all possible. Use Flight Assist Off for evasive maneuvering in these situations, as a thruster malfunction or power loss will allow your ship to continue to drift away while Reboot Repair takes care of the issue. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.